Hello everybody um, and welcome. Today I am going to do a, well three actually paintings. I'm going to be using this reference picture which I got from Unsplash by Yoxel Zock and it's um, some snowdrops. So I've used that as a, as a reference basically. But um, I'm going to be doing these three ways, which is why I've got an A3 piece of paper here and I have um, sectioned it off so that we can do our snowdrops in three different ways. Um, I'm In order to preserve the white, I am going to use wax resist on one. I'm going to use some masking fluid on another and on the final one I'm going to try and just paint round and reserve the white. So well, <laughs> it could be quite interesting. I think I will do the background slightly differently. Maybe we'll do a bouquet effect on one. I've pulled out some granulation medium so um, we can use that. Uh, but yes, I think I'm going to try and do them in slightly different ways and let's see which one we prefer. So, um, I'm hoping that you can kind of see my pencil lines. Yeah, I think you can. I did them as thickly as I could. So I'm going to start on the left here by using this wax crayon. Um, if you've got... Um, um, a candle, like a plain candle, that would also do it. And I'm just going to try to preserve the white of the snowdrops with this. And then I might go in and um, add some definition, shadow, muddy them up a little bit, whatever, um, later. So, um, I don't know if any of you have tried all these various methods in order to save the white. Of course, if all else fails, we will be turning to our bleed proof white. But I want to give this a go and see which, which technique I prefer. <sighs> okay, that's the white preserved on that one with the wax crayon. I haven't used masking fluid in quite some time. I don't even know what state this will be in. Let's find a rag. Oh, no, it is coming out. Okay. Right, now how accurate we can be with this is another thing, but we will give it a go. I don't want to put it on too thickly. And this is my only beef, I suppose, with masking fluid is that it can be quite difficult to control. This one is a Daniel Smith's. You can see I haven't used it in quite some time but let's hope it does its job. And it has actually got this nice nozzle which probably makes it a little bit easier to control. Even so, it's still fairly tricky. I know that there are tools that you can use, and I do have them, but I'm going down this route today. Oh, that's it. Try and pop them bubbles. Oh, let me get another one. 
will go in there and then let's get our last one done obviously with the masking fluid you have to let that dry before you can do any painting over it okay let's hope that that's worked pop that back on and we will just pop that away okay so that needs to dry that's our wax resist and this one we are just painting so I think I'm going to start on the left here because that will give this chance to dry and I want to get a background in. I'm not worried about losing my pencil marks, um, I will manage. So on this one I'm going to do some wet in wet. So I am going to wet my page but I'm going to try not to wet my snowdrops. So this could be easier said than done. Let's hope we can get it roughly. But that's the only thing that I'm going to try and preserve is the snowdrops. Everything else I am just putting the water over the top of We are getting there. So I guess this is the fiddly bit, isn't it? If we want to not paint our snowdrops and leave the white of the paper. I'm just going to tilt that a little bit so that I can see what's going on. Obviously, when we put the water on, we get a shine on the paper. Okay, so paints that I'm going to use today are my Michael Harding paints. So I will yell out the colours, but um, I don't think that's particularly... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't need these particular colours. You can choose your own. I'm actually going to use, on this one, I'm going to use indigo at the top here. And I'm going to start with it quite um, dark in the background. And then I'm just going to let that... I wonder if it will run if I add a lot of water. Experiment with me, folks. I know not what we will work and what won't. But I want, and I will add some green at the bottom here, but I, I just want it to fade out a bit. And it's not doing too badly. Um, I don't want too much. There we go. I want the blue as my basic background. Okay. 
now that I've got that in there, I'm going to add a tad more up in this corner and make that corner a bit darker because uh, watercolour will dry lighter than it looks when it's wet. So and then I want to add some green and I'll go with olive green in this case. I want to add some green into the bottom here that will be different from the green of the leaves. Because it will mix with the blue. Let's just try and spread that a little bit more. Oh, and I've gone on. We are going to need the bleed proof white. It's not too bad. Let's find a tissue and a very small corner of tissue and see if I can just. Yes, we can take that back to the white. And we've got another bit there. So, um, as long as they are not too staining, when you're doing your background and preserving the white of the snowdrops, if you find a little tissue and get the corner, then you should be able to um, uh, lift off, lift the colour off the paper and go back to the white. So there we have um, that background, the beginnings of that background, that's obviously going to need to dry. So we can do a background for our snowdrops with the wax resist. And um, let's choose something different. Uh, let's go for perilene green, maybe. Perilene green, where are you? There you are. Um, and in this case, because I don't have to be precious, I'm just going to go straight on with my paint but I'm as you can see I'm adding lots of water as I go and voila it goes straight over the wax so that's not going to cause us a problem Darker in one corner again. Or maybe even on one side on this one. Let's have one side that's quite dark. Okay. And then maybe on this one we will do some water splats to get an effect like so okay we need that one to dry how am I doing with my that's not quite dry so we need to leave everything to dry before we can carry on so bear with me I'll be back in a moment okay so these two are now dry and I think that's dry enough so we will put a background on this middle one with the masking fluid on it and what shall we use this time perhaps we will go with hmm what shall we go with maybe we'll go with cosmic blue And we'll get that in the background. Up to a point. And then we will maybe 
maybe go with some perylene green. No, we've, we've already used perylene green. Why don't we use forest green? Where's forest green? There you are. Hopefully. Yep, that's definitely a green. So let's go with... Oh, we're going to need a bit more of that, aren't we? Let's go with that kind of blending into the forest green. We don't have to be too careful again. Because of our masking fluid. So we can get that in there. This seems to be quite a delicate green. So that's blending in there. And then maybe, maybe on this one, we will put some granulation medium and see if that does anything different. Oh, actually it probably does. So there, we've added some granulation medium for a different kind of effect. The water splats kind of disappeared on this one once it was dry, so I think maybe now that it is dry, let's maybe... I've got this wonderful instrument here, which has got these circles. Maybe we will take out some paint and um, have a bit of a bouquet effect going on. Now then, further away needs to be maybe smaller, so try and do these one at a time. Oh, that works really well. In fact, almost too well. Mm, they're not really going into circles, are they? Abandon, abandon the the tool, and maybe just use yes, that's a bit better, isn't it? Just use the brush to have some circles that we, you do have to keep cleaning your brush in order to take some paint out. I'm not sure that I'm liking these that much, but clean piece of tissue. I don't know, they might look nice once we get the trees in front of them. So each time it's just a wet brush, pop the tissue down and lift off. Now, depending on the colours that you choose, you might not be able to lift off as well as I am. So, um, and then maybe we'll have a bit bigger circle down here. Bearing in mind, 
find that we will of course be going over all of this anyway. So yeah, it does show up even, even on the lighter bits. Just to give some kind of an effect. In fact, maybe what happens if we splat water now? That might be better. Let's get a clean, a clean tissue and just press. Oh yes. Oh, that's better, I think. Right. Okay, so that's still drying in the middle there. Um, so let's go over here and get some trees in. Now I want to kind of make a grey blue, and I used indigo, didn't I? So, um... Let's get our indigo and maybe a little bit of neutral tint. And maybe we will add a little bit of this. What was this called? Warm white. But that's made me quite a nice grey. So I am going to get some of these trees in the background. With this kind of muted grey colour. Which is kind of mingling quite nicely with the indigo underneath. Hope I'm managing to keep my head out of the shot. That's one of my usual problems. So I can still vaguely see my pencil lines which just gives me some some guidance really on where I might want to put my trees. But of course I'm now going away from that and adding in whatever I like. I'm going to get a few more like so. And we don't want them floating up in the sky. So we are just going to use some water. So that we ground them basically. I did forget to say what paper I'm using other than it is A3. So I will share that with you. This is the paper that I'm using. It is Hanamule. Um, it's actually acrylic paper, believe it or not, at 450 GSM. It isn't even watercolour paper, but I don't use it very much. And there was like two sheets left. So, um, yes, that's what I'm using. But it's still working quite well, I think. So there we go. We've, And then all we need to do is blend that down because we... We don't want the harsh... Oh, one of my hairs. 
um, we don't want the, the harsh, I don't want the harsh edges, so I'm using the water to just blend that further down and now that looks better. So we've got some trees in the background on that one. Um, the paint brushes that I'm using, I'm moving between a 12, a 6 and a 10 round basically. So now let's get some trees no, that one's still wet. Let's do the trees. No, that one's still a bit wet as well. Oh, uh, I think we'll be all right. More effects. Okay. Let us get some trees in on this one. And we've got a green background, so I'm going to make a grey green now. I'm just going to use the grey that I made up before. But I've added a bit of the perylene green to it so that we can get this grey green colour going on. And of course I will be grounding these trees as well. So now my bouquet effect is not looking quite, I was a little bit worried about that, <laughs> but hopefully you're all enjoying experimenting with me and seeing what happens when I go, oh no, that doesn't work, let's do this, let's try something else, let's not panic basically, let's not panic, let's just go with the flow. And enjoy our time that we've decided to paint in. Right, okay, so now we have some trees in the background there. And let's just ground those with our water. And then with a bigger brush, I'm just going to use some water to just stop that from looking as if it's got a hard edge. This perylene green, which is dragging down, is taking a bit of blending out, to be honest. But never mind. Okay. How wet is that? Right, I'm going to dry what I've done and come back. There we go. So we are all pretty much um, dry again now. So I think what I will do now is put the trees in the background on this one. And we used cosmic blue on this one, didn't we? So let's mix cosmic blue with a little bit of the warm white. And yes, that gives us a fairly nice grey. Where am I? There I am. Thank you. 
so this um you know the marks the sketching that I did earlier is just really um to give me an idea of what I might be doing I'm really not sticking to it to be honest but it just helps me plan the painting out uh, let's see okay so there we have got our trees let's just use a bit of water And then we can ground those because we don't want them floating in the air. And I'm just gonna, yet again, get a slightly bigger brush and just try and make sure we haven't got too much of a harsh edge um, yeah, okay. that's not looking too bad either quite interesting with the granulation fluid going on and there we've got that lifting out or bouquet effect in the background which I think is looking quite nice this one we just haven't used um, anything. That's just the paint doing its job there. So now we need to get some of our snowdrops more defined. So I use my smaller brush and we're gonna put the little caps on. And I'm going to use a mixture of the, what's this called? Bright Green Lake, which is really quite bright. And I might save that for the leaves, but I'm going to add in a little bit of the olive green to tone that down slightly. Okay. Actually, go from left to right. And let's get this little, these little caps in. There we go. And then this one here. Of course, the one with that masking fluid, we will have to, right at the end, take the masking fluid off. That could be interesting. I'm not sure how this paper will cope with that. Okay, and then we need the caps on these. So, so we've got our little caps on. Let's get some of these stalks in and we'll add a bit of this perylene, a bit more perylene green to it, make the stalks a bit darker, but not as dark as perylene green. And let's see if we can get these little bits in. 
call them storks. I don't really know. There's a better name for them, isn't there, somewhere? And then we've got that one. And let's do it this way. So this is my size six. Like so. And then we've got this one here. So I'm going to need to do that one. Up way around, going down to there. And then that one around. So, now I'm going to get these big leaves in, so let's, let's go to a size 10. I'm going to add a bit more of the bright green in there now. Bright green lake. So let's see. this first big leaf in. I think I can kind of see already that I prefer where I've actually just left the white of the paper. <laughs> but let's wait till the end. I might be jumping ahead. So there we go. We've got our big leaf there. This one's coming down here. What I might do is add, let's just add, if I can get some up, let's add a little bit of yellow in there, give it some variation. And the same for this one. Dot a bit of that yellow in and give it some, some kind of texture. Okay, and then we've got this leaf here. And obviously the wax won't let me paint over it on this particular one. Okay, and what have I missed? I've missed the rest of these stalks coming down. So let's go back to our slightly more perylene mix and bring that stalk down and that one ooh, okay. down there like so is that lining up yeah more or less and then this one and this one's might be coming down like that maybe and then let's do this one And this one. So let's just tidy that up a bit. So now we have got our um, snowdrops in. Now I'm going to try and, when this is dry, rub some of that pencil mark out. And then I might just do some faint shading 
Um, obviously, I can't do anything else with this one. So, ah, Neo Color. We'll try Neo Color to get some shading and to make those snowdrops a little bit better. Um, I might just because I'm not particularly liking that piece of bouquet effort. So let's detract from it slightly. Okay. And I think we'll do something similar over here. Not too much, we don't want to go berserk, but we need a little something, I think. All slightly different, but let's dry this off and then we can come back and tidy up and do some detail. Okay, everything is now dry again. So initially I want to get rid of some of this pencil mark. So I am using a Faber Castell, it's like the putty rubber. So I'm just going to press, keep turning this around and I should be able to reduce, there we go. So it's still there but very faint and that way I can then use some paint to um, get some shadow in there and get the shapes in that way. So that's my putty rubber that I've just used. Now this is, um, I can't remember what this is called I'm afraid, but it's what you use to get rid of the masking fluid haha um, mm. this is probably why I haven't used masking fluid in a while isn't it because it's making a terrible mess okay and it is actually um, ripping this paper somewhat but maybe if I just go a bit more gently then we might be able to no it's definitely ripping the paper there mm, we might be using bleed proof white by the looks of it Good grief. Okay, lesson learned. This paper really doesn't like. I wonder if it's better if I just use my fingers. I think this is called Mask Away. But. Oh, goodness me. Persevere, Michelle. Do not give up. We will salvage what we can. Look at the mess. <laughs> okay, this is quite horrid stuff I have to say but I think maybe we might be getting there gradually but gradually that's very sticky Oof. I'm quite tempted to get this this out this palette knife to try and get this off
Okay. I now know why I don't use masking fluid. I'm not sure I'm going to do much better with this. Have any of you ever had this problem? trying to get rid of the masking fluid. Okay. I am going to I will salvage it. Let's not let's not panic. Or oh, those of you that are in the UK and know Dad's army, don't panic, Mr. Mallory. Right. This one we can't do anything about because the wax resist has gone over the top of the pencil. So I think I'm going to start with the, my most difficult one. And I'm going to use some bleed proof white. Once I've got a clean brush. Okay. Okay. So with our bleed proof white, oh it's such marvellous stuff isn't it, don't you just love bleed proof white? With our bleed proof white we will salvage this painting, or this particular one. And the coat, I mean, there are like lumpy, bumpy bits. But maybe that's texture. We'll call that texture. Okay. Well, it's different. I will give it that much. Right, what have we got here? We've got Hard to see what I'm now doing where the paper has all ripped. But there we go. Yes, not the best. Wouldn't recommend. Dear, oh dear. Right, okay. That's, let's leave that to dry anyway. Now, what I want to do with, uh, let me see, should we go with this? 
kind of yellowy colour. Um, and I hope that's not going to be the right colour. I'm just going to... And we need a little green bit in there anyway. I'm just going to define these edges. But to be honest, I'm not liking the wax resist that much either. That was what this experiment was all about. What do we like? What don't we like? So maybe we will just do a bit of shading on these like that. Okay, that's that one. This one, I'm going to go back in with the paint. And I want very, very pale, um, watered down is what I mean, sorry. Very, very watered down so that I can just... get a little bit of definition here. Just get a little bit of an outline going on. I've got hardly any paint on my brush really and now we will revert to water and we will get that blended in a bit better so that They're not so much like lines. Mm. Much better. Mm. Okay. But I'm uh, mm, still not liking it that much. Somehow I've managed to get tons of the white Dr. Martin's pH white up my arm. So I'll just use some of my water and a tissue to get that off. But yeah, this... I am um, struggling to like, really. Perhaps if we try and get a little bit more definition in there. But it's kind 
kind of not not really doing it for me. Just blend that out a bit. Blend, blend, and more blend, I think. Need proof white isn't dry yet either. But I am struggling to like this one. I'm doing my best with it, folks. And I'll somehow I've managed to get the bleed proof white on there. Which is not good. And soak you up and stop you from whoops. It's got a very dry brush here. Or a thirsty brush as some people call it. And try and tidy that back up. So, hmm. that kind of needs something there, I think. And it needs over into that. One thing I will say about these Craftamo brushes is that they have the most fabulous points on them. So that you really can get right in there um, to sort them out, to sort little details out. So she's splatting again. Well, I know which one, I'm just going to blur that a bit more with some, because that's Neo Colour 2. Maybe that's a bit better. That was a wet tissue. Okay, I am going to peel this off now. And we will see what we've got. Um, these aren't, I'm not expecting these to look like wonderful pieces of art. I just wanted to work out which techniques were going to be the best for these snowdrops. Okay, let's do our next. 
I mean, to be fair, the masking fluid might work better on watercolour paper. But I don't think I've ever been successful with masking fluid. I don't know, are any of you successful with masking fluid? Um, does it work for you? But I think, personally, I prefer the wax resist, but most of all, just leaving the paper white. <laughs> um, I think I prefer that the most. Right, we're nearly there, folks. Let's just get this last... That has ripped it slightly, never mind. This last bit of masking tape off. And try and untangle it from my fingers. There we go. Well, actually, it was washi tape. Right. Let's move those out of the way. And what I was, um, I what I taped my paper to is an A3 piece of Perspex, believe it or not, which worked quite well. Oh, I've left one on there. We've left a piece of washi tape on there. We hadn't quite finished, had we? Let's get this one off. Now what I will do is I will bring all three of these up. You will see the disaster that the masking tape, uh, sorry, masking fluid you uh, made. So um, actually, what should I do? Should I come down a little bit? Let's see. Let's, let's, how does that work? No, I think that's a little bit too um, too far away, isn't it? Let's not do that. Um, let's go back here again and just bring them up. So, this is our first one, which has got our wax resist. Then in the middle, the mess <laughs> that the masking fluid made. And on the end, my favourite, which is basically just using the watercolour um, paper. So, uh, yes, let me know what you think. Has it given you some ideas? Um, perhaps, um, I'm trying to think, this one, yeah, we just used water and a bouquet effect. This one, I used some granulation medium in the background. And this one was just just watercolour. Um, I do quite like the bouquet effect behind the trees, I have to say. And the little bit in the front there. So um, that has come out quite, quite nicely, I think. Um, bring that up just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. You can probably see them slightly better now. So, um, I don't know. Take your pick. We'll call them one, two in the middle, three on the right. Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. And hopefully those of you that have been asking to see me do some painting, um, yeah, let me know. Is this what you're wanting? All right, then take care, everybody. See you next time.